Hi, this is Alfred Weaver, professor of computer science at the University of Virginia and a co-guest editor with my longtime friend, Dr. Jane Prey at the National Science Foundation. We're pleased to have uh, as our guest today uh, Dr. Annie Anton, the chair and, the, and professor at the School of Interactive Computing at Georgia Tech. Annie, thank you for taking the time to be with us. My pleasure. So let me get right to it. Uh, why do you think diversity in computing is important? So I think there are several reasons uh, that diversity in computing is important. First of all, without diversity, it's very hard to attract other um, members of diverse groups. So a lot of women, for instance, would, are not attracted to the field of fields in computing because they see so few women there already. And so another reason is that a lot of times people who are from underrepresented groups or women have a completely different perspective on how to solve a problem or have a deeper understanding of kinds of problems that perhaps very homogeneous groups would not consider um, to be a problem or understand how the subtleties of how one might go about producing solutions. I, always, I often think about the situation of um, how houses that were designed by men have um, small closets, whereas houses that are designed by women have large kitchens and large walk-in closets. And so different, different people from different groups have different needs and desires, and if we don't have a, a diverse student body and a diverse workforce, we'll fail to consider those in our solutions. I think that's a, a cool analogy there about the, uh, the kitchen and the walk-in closet. I like that. Uh, well, now that we know a little bit about your own uh, thinking about diversity, uh, I want to ask you what in particular has Georgia Tech done to help achieve diversity? So Georgia Tech is very committed to diversity, and the College of Computing at Georgia Tech has created an Office of Outreach, Enrollment, and Community. And one of the things that's really interesting, and it's just having um, returned to Georgia Tech after attending the Tapia Conference, is it becomes very, very important to have a sense of community for these groups, um, for women, for um, Hispanics, for um, for African Americans, and so you just want to have this sense of community and shared um, beliefs and camaraderie and experience. And the, our Office of Outreach and Enrollment and Community has done a, a stellar job with this. Our office is part of the NC WIT Pace Center, so Cedric Saltworth um, is very active with that. Um, we've committed to increasing the number of women in grad, in, amongst our grad students, for instance, and we've met that, that goal, and we're continuing to work on that. Um, another thing that we've done is that we have changed our intro to computer science courses so that we have three different CS1 courses. One is for engineers, one is for CS majors, and the other one is um, a media and computation course for non which is for non-technical majors. And so having that kind of diversity and tailoring that class to different groups, um, we believe is one really good way to try to address the need to um, expose different groups to computing. And we uh, know that there's a lot of a lot that's shown that these classes can be really critical in helping students change their majors to computing. And I, in fact, kind of had that experience when I was an undergraduate as well. So tell me a little more about that. So I was an education major, and then I was a business major, and then I took a computer science class. And um, I really, really enjoyed it. And I changed my major to computer science. And I really, it was really wasn't what I expected to be doing for the rest of my life. So if you get someone at the right time and you give them a really great experience in a class like that, you can really change the trajectory of their career. Now that, <clears throat> that sounds very, very dramatic. Uh, that, that, that's cool that... Uh, taking that, that one programming class uh, mm -hmm. influenced you to completely change your major. Right. Well, let me ask you one more question and uh, ask you to uh, look into your own personal crystal ball. Um, when you think about where we are with regards to diversity now, what's your best guess about where we'll be a decade from now? 
I think that a decade from now we'll see a lot more diversity. I think in the United States, for some reason, it's taken us a longer time to catch up with other countries. For instance, I know in Spain, I don't remember where I saw this, but I remember reading an article a few years ago where the number of women studying computing in Spain was larger than the number of men studying computing in Spain. And so in other parts of the world, we see that there are a lot of women in computing, and there is diversity in computing. And I think it's just a matter of time before we catch up with that. And I think all of these different programs are, that we're doing at our respective universities, so for instance, another program I didn't mention is that George Tech has um, a co-articulation agreement with Spelman and Morehouse, which are two HBCUs here in Atlanta, um, to, to let the students do their BS at their institutions and get the MS um, at George Tech as a dual degree, a joint degree program. And so the more that we have these opportunities, I think that we're going to, we will see the payoff and we'll see a lot more diversity, especially within 10 years. Well, that sounds really good. It makes me hopeful for the future. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview and best wishes. Thank you, Alf. I'm very honored. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.